So um, this equation has two radical signs, one there and one there. So when we isolate, we're going to isolate one radical. And then we'll show you the rest of it, and then it's going to kind of keep going through the same steps. Okay, so you've got to split up the radicals. You're going to have one on each side. So I'm going to move this one over to the other side. That's going to give me the square root of 3x plus 1 equals um, the square root of x plus 4 plus 1. You could write it the other way, 1 plus the square root of x plus 4, but it doesn't matter. Um, oh, I put those parentheses in already. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to square both sides. So we're going to square this side, and we're going to square this side, just like maybe what you might have expected. So the idea is get one radical by itself, and we got this radical by itself. And then we're going to square both sides, and then we'll see what happens from there. Okay, on the left, everything's great. The square root and the square are out, and we have 3x plus 1. On the right-hand side, well, that's not quite as easy to see. So you have the square root of x plus 4 plus 1 times the square root of x plus 4 plus 1. So if I'm foiling, I have this times this. Okay, that's the square root of x plus 4 squared, right? Because it's times itself. And then I'm going to have this times 1, which is just going to be the square root of x plus 4. And then I'm going to have the insides, I'm just foiling here, plus another square root of x plus 4. And then I'm going to have the last, 1 times 1, which is 1. Okay, so now let's see what we have. We have the 3x plus 1. You'll notice that there's quite a bit of room on the paper for you to write this. Uh, that's because it's going to take quite a bit of room. So the square root and the square, those cancel out, so we have x plus 4. And then I have one square root x plus 4 and another one. So that's going to be 2 square root x plus, supposed to be, well, I wrote it wrong, didn't I? It's supposed to be x plus 4. Plus that 1. Okay. Now, see the 4 and the 1? We're going to put those together because they're on the same side. So x plus 5 plus 2 square root x plus 4. Okay, now we only have, the good news is, we only have one radical in the equation. So we got rid of one of them. Uh, the bad news is we have to go through the whole thing again, isolate this radical, and square both sides. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides, and I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And that's going to give me 2x minus 4 equals 2 square root x plus 4. Now, I'm going to make this problem just a little bit easier for myself. Um, I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. And so that's kind of what it looks like. I mean, you can write it that way. And so you get x minus 2 equals the square root of x plus 4. Now, if you didn't divide by 2, you could still square both sides. You just have to square the, the 2 as well. But with it out of the way, it makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so now I have that radical isolated on the right-hand side, and now I need to square both sides. Get rid of the radical, right? Okay, so on the left-hand side, we have to foil that out, or use the formula, or whatever you do to square a binomial. But remember, we want to be able to square a binomial. I think we did that one earlier in another video. And then on the right-hand side, the square root and the square, take care of each other. <laughs> and then we have this equation, which is a quadratic equation. That means I'm going to set it to 0. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides, and I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. And that's going to give me x squared minus 5x equals 0. Well, I'm excited to see this problem because I don't know that we've really done one like this before, but maybe we have. It's quadratic. But there's a GCF. I'm going to factor out the x. Okay, so I get two solutions. x could be 0, or x could be 5. 
Now, you'll have to check them. Where do we check them? In the original equation, which I don't know if I'm going to remember what that was. So I've got to look. 3x plus 1. I'm pretty sure that's right, but I better double check. Yes. Okay. So let's try the zero first and see what happens. So if I put in a zero, then I have the square root of one minus the square root of four, which is one minus two. And is that one? No, that'd be negative one. So that one doesn't work. Extraneous root. Uh, let's try the 5. Okay, so now I'm going to try the 5, and it's that equation that I had. So the square root of 3 times 5 plus 1, I'll scroll it back down so you can see it better, minus the square root of 5 plus 4, does that equal 1? So I'm using this equation, the original equation, and I'm plugging in a 5 for x. I'm going to see if it works. So what's the square root of 15 plus 1 minus the square root of 9? Well, 15 plus 1 is 16. Square root of 16 is 4. And 4, the square root of 9 is 3. And does 4 minus 1 equal 3? Yes. So the 5 worked. Again, that was the answer in the last problem, I think. It's not always 5. <laughs> And sometimes they, neither solution works if there's two solutions. Sometimes you'll only get one solution. Um, and sometimes they both work. All kinds of exciting situations. But those are the hard ones. I'll give you that. So you, you got to isolate one radical, square both sides, and then move everything over to isolate the other radical and square both sides.